guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, let me introduce myself. My name is Tim Marshburn. This channel is Papa D Rides, and the channel is all about long distance motorcycle touring and all things motorcycle related. So I'm getting ready to go out to the Big Bend area of Texas, and I'm gonna be gone about 14 days. So I wanted to show you guys how I pack my bag for a 14 day trip. Now I have a Nelson rig, Route 1 bag, as you can see here. It's a very nice bag. I've used it for a couple of years now. Um, it is expandable, so um, if I wind up needing extra space, I can actually take this and zip it and expand it out about three inches. So hopefully I won't need that space. I've been real bad in the past about overpacking and I'm trying not to do that. Um, and I still probably am overpacking for this trip, but the bag is there. And what most people would do is they just take their bag, their clothes and put them down inside of the bag. I, however, take a couple of extra precautionary steps. Now this bag has got a rain fly with it, um, I've never had an issue with clothes getting wet in this bag. I had a previous similar bag, and they both have got a plastic tub, so the water can't get up through the bottom. If you cover it with a rain fly, it's probably going to be fine. But the old bag that I had, the plastic tub got cracked, and every now and again, the inside of the bag would get wet. If that happens, for whatever reason, your clothes can get damp, and if you don't realize it, don't air them out they'll get mildewed pretty quickly. And that's a hard thing to deal with while you're on the road and I don't want to deal with that. So I pack all of my clothes in a Ziploc bag. And so the first reason is to keep them protected. Secondarily, I take an extra couple of Ziploc bags with me. So here are the extras. The reason for this is I take all my fresh clothes, everything's ready to go. I pack them all together in this big Ziploc bag. And then each day as I collect dirty socks and dirty underwear, um, other garments that are gonna be soaked in sweat, I'll take those garments and put them down in the other Ziploc bag and I'll seal it up. You know, those garments really start to smell like a locker room after a couple of days. And you don't want that odor in your bag, you don't want that odor on your other clothes. So it just keeps my fresh clothes in a fresh bag my dirty clothes in a dirty bag and it seals that odor up so it doesn't get into any of my other belongings that are in this bag. So that's why I take the second bag. I also take laundry pods with me so I will wash clothes. I know there's a laundry mat in Trilingua. I know there's a laundry mat in Fort Davis. So I will more than likely wash clothes in Trilingua while we're there and then I'll wash clothes again in Fort Davis before I come home. So I've got the laundry pods four of those, I've got four dryer sheets and a nice Ziploc bag. And I had to push all the air out of this, but I'm gonna do that again. Ooh, that smells good. So I'll just go and throw those in the bottom of the bag. I'm gonna throw my extra Ziplocs in the bottom of the bag. Now what I have in this stack here for two weeks is I have four pairs of underwear, six pairs of moisture wicking socks. I have three Moisture wicking t-shirts. I have three short sleeve t-shirts, four long sleeve t-shirts, one dress shirt, one pair of blue jeans to pack, one pair of regular like khaki shorts to pack, and two pairs of gym shorts. So I wear the gym shorts at night around the hotel um, and you know in my room, bed clothes. But that's what I'll pack. Of course, I will have on a set of clothes when I leave. That's what I take for two weeks. So let's get all this inside the bag, get the air out of it, and I'll show you what it looks like inside of my Nelson rig bag. Okay, so now I have everything down in my bag. I'll put it over my Nelson rig bag. And I probably could have compressed a little bit more air out of this, but there's no need. Let me show you what I've got in here now. All right, if you look down in the bag, I've got everything over on this side. There's plenty of room still to the top. 
Well, I got it about two inches from the top. Everything's gonna press down. And then on this side, that's open all the way to the bottom. I can put my little sandals in here and my toiletry bag and still have room in case I collect something along the way. So guys, that's how I pack the bag. There's another YouTuber named Everyday Faye and she challenged everybody to show us what's in your saddlebag. So I'm gonna show you guys what's in my saddlebag right now. And then I'll show you what's gonna be on there as I go on the trip. So that's coming up. All right, guys, it's the next morning and I'm gonna see what's in my bag. The first thing I have to do is wake Passion up. So, Everyday Faye challenged us to show what's inside of our saddlebags, and I've got to straighten mine up and clean them out, especially my tour pack, before I go on this trip, because uh, unlike Barbara CVO, who said he was anal about all this stuff, I'm not. I, I use these things, they're functional for me, and uh, I keep things in there that I think I'm gonna need, and then the top case, or the tour pack, when I'm not on a trip, I just throw stuff in there and oftentimes I forget to take it back out. So let's see what's in these bags. Okay, this is the right-hand saddle bag. Look, a coffee cup from a ride I went last week and some trash. Okay, let's clean that out. Here we go, now we're back at it. Let's see here. I have my rain gear, which will go right back down in there. extra shield and this is actually the tinted shield for my helmet and then down at the bottom I have some cleaning supplies on this side an air cover for this in case it rains air cleaner cover these pair of gloves those are for rain. And then this is just has some extra gaiters and cold weather protection things in them. So mask covers and a fleece gaiter and that kind of thing. So that's pretty what's, much what's in the right-hand saddle bag. And that's what I keep in there. Actually, I'll put some more gloves in there, but I keep things that I need frequently when I'm on the road in the right-hand saddlebag so I can get quick access to, access to them. When the bike is on the kickstand, it's harder to dig down inside of the left-hand saddlebag. So I keep these items in the right-hand saddlebag so that I can uh, access them quickly. So I can get to my rain gear fast. I can also get to my gloves and change my gloves quickly. Those things stay there. And also when I'm on a trip, there'll be a Yeti cup in there full of ice and water. I wear a backpack, Camelback, um, when I'm riding long distance, but I keep a water jug full of ice water in this saddlebag, and I keep another one in my cup holder. That way, if I stop between gas stations and I need to refill my Camelback, I just take the ice water out of those two containers, refill my Camelback with water, and then at the next gas stop, I fill everything up again. Um, sometimes when I'm traveling by myself, I'll go an entire tank without actually stopping at a gas station. I'll stop at a rest area somewhere to use the bathroom, stretch my legs. I'll refill my water. And when you get out west where you're in desert climates, you need to hydrate. So that's why I keep that in there. So that's not there today. But when I leave to go on the trip, there'll be water in a Yeti cup inside of this saddlebag. Okay, let's go to the left side. All right, guys, let's look inside the left-hand saddlebag. This bag's... I want to have a lot more stuff in it. <laughs> okay, so first, I have some cleaning rags. I have a first aid kit. I'll open that up in a minute and show you what's in there. Um, I had the drone in here from the other day, so that's where I keep my drone. Take that in the house. Okay, further down inside of this bag, more cleaning supplies. 
I have a cargo net. If I want to put something on the back seat, I can use this. I keep a couple of adjustable bungee cords so I can make them different sizes. It's a helipad for my drone. This is a portable air compressor. I keep an air compressor in there. I have tools, this whole roll bag full of tools and more tools. Tire gauge back there in case I need it for somebody else. More cleaning supplies. So in that left-hand saddle bag, I have the things I don't use as often. The tools go down at the bottom because they're the heaviest. I keep an air compressor with me so that I can check my tire pressure frequently and keep it adjusted properly while I'm on the road. And I can use that for other people that need air as well. You can't always rely on a gas station air compressor. It's good to have one with you. I've had this air compressor since 2009 and it's still going strong. Now that I've said that, it'll probably fail on me, but it's been well worth it to have it and I use it a lot. So the air compressor stays in there, random tools, bungee cords, zip ties, cleaning supplies, all in this left-hand saddlebag. I don't open it up that much, but I have things in there in case I need them. And the first aid kit. Let me show you the first aid kit real quick. Okay guys, I wanna show you what's inside of my trauma kit real quick. I really like this little first aid kit. I'll put a link into it to the Amazon link in it in the description but it's a great little first aid kit and what we're primarily concerned with is something were to happen on a bike is hemorrhage control that's what this little bag is all about is stopping the bleeding so someone can make it hopefully safely to the hospital and survive the incident so in my little trauma pack here i have trauma bandaging with quick plot in it so it's not only a bandage but it has some powder in there that actually causes the blood to coagulate and clot faster to help stop the bleeding. I have an Israeli bandage which is used to pack inside an open wound and then you can wrap around and make it very tight and put pressure on that dressing and on that wound to help stop the bleeding. I have a small splint we can use to take care of some small fractures. I'll probably add another one of these, but I have a tourniquet that you can apply to yourself on any extremity or can apply it to someone else. I'll probably get at least one more of these to put in the pack for now. I just have this one and it's a cat trauma tourniquet is what it's called. Some more compression gauze. triangular bandage you use that to make a sling or other bandages a head bandage whatever you might need some scissors some gloves and then these are two chest seals and the chest seals you've heard of sucking chest wound this would allow me to seal a sucking chest wound or two up on an individual so they'll be able to breathe hopefully better until the professional responders arrive. So this is a down and dirty first aid kit for hemorrhage control. Um, nothing too fancy, but it's very compact, easy to carry. And quite honestly, if something goes bad on the motorcycle, it's really gonna be really, really bad or not much to it. And this is preparing for the worst case scenario. I do not carry airway supplies on a bike. Uh, we have to manage the airway as best we could without those devices. I don't carry a bag valve mask to ventilate someone on the bike. Uh, just, I don't think it's practical to do that. But this will help us control bleeding if something were to happen on the road. I always keep a first aid kit in my bike I suggest you do that. I don't have band-aids, I don't have pills, you know, headache pills, that kind of thing. I have stuff for hemorrhage control because that's what's gonna save somebody's life if they get hurt out here 
on the bike, more than likely, um, if you can control the hemorrhage, you have time to figure out all the other stuff. But if they have a major bleed, especially an arterial bleed, they can bleed out and die within minutes if you don't address that quickly. This is designed to address those life threats of hemorrhage quickly, and then we can work on all the other stuff. Biggest thing is, know where you're at. Somebody needs to call 911 immediately and get the professional responders on the way to where you're at. The remote locations we go to sometimes, it's going to be a while before somebody gets there. So I hope I don't ever have to take this stuff out, but I have it on the bike. All right, guys. <laughs> the moment of truth. What is in the top case? Wow. <laughs> Look at this. Let's see here. Have some ibuprofen. I'm sorry, some Tylenol. Some Benadryl because the pollen's been kicking lately and I needed some allergy pills. Have my gloves and those will be on me or probably in the side case on the trip. Pack of potato chips. Don't know how long that's been in there. A hat. Winter gloves. Those will go in the right-hand saddle bag on the trip. They're just quicker to access them here. I have Papa D stickers to hand out that I haven't had before. I've got an extra selfie stick for my Insta cameras, a flashlight, earplugs, kickstand, a gator, sunscreen, a can koozie, a bag with water bottles in it, some atomic fireballs, more sunscreen, more COVID mask, a spare tripod. I was looking for that. A money bag, my shark, and I must put this in here when I was washing the bike the other day, it goes up on the dash. The shark goes right there and rides there all the time. Okay. Um, Christian motorcycle, little wristband. I do have my Robert Simmons stickers, my tab zombie performance stickers, and my Screaming Eagle sticker there. I got to get some more stickers to put in here. And then um, have a couple of knives and ink pens there. Some more trash. Uh, what is that? It's like a compact of some kind of like a little mirror from the Christian Association. Just a bunch of trash in here right now. And then I have all my license registration, extra hearing aid batteries, another ink pen, and uh, Harley Davidson manuals in the little pouch. I will, when I'm on the road, this is pretty much cleaned out. My computer bag and my CPAP go in here. And then I use this receptacle there. So I've got it set up with two USB ports. I will plug my camera batteries into that and I will always have batteries back here charging so that I can keep fresh batteries. So guys, that's what's in my bags. There you are, Everyday Faye. Now you know what I keep in my bags on the bike. Um, pretty organized left and right, but this top tour case is pretty much uh, whatever's in there at the, at the moment when I'm not on a trip. I do organize it better when I'm traveling just for the ease of knowing where everything's at and getting her done. But that's that. I'm getting ready to head over and meet a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine actually, Warren Smathers, who's a subscriber, but he's been a friend a long time. We worked together in Charlotte. He and his wife are both retired. She was one of our office assistants, did chart processing and that kind of thing at Medic. They retired a couple of years ago. Warren retired a couple of years ago uh, due to some health reasons, and Maureen retired last year, and they've been traveling the country in an Airstream. Well, they're getting ready to move out of the country, 
And so I'm going to Texas, and when I get back, he'll only be in town a couple of days before they're flying down to Miami to fly to their new home. So I wanted to go meet him for lunch today. So we're going to ride over there, meet him for lunch in just a little while, and come back. And I'll put this video together, and you guys will see it in a little while. Okay, guys. See you in a little bit. Warren and I had a great lunch at the smoke pit. I had a pork taco and he had a burnt in sandwich. Really tasty. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this kind of content, be sure to subscribe to my channel and follow me along for this tango to Terlingua that I'm getting ready to go on. Okay guys, I'll catch you guys in the next video.